keeping us today. So, you know, it, it doesn't seem like things, well, no, it, it does. I know there's still a lot of speculation. There's a story about this team or this program, but it does seem as if with practices beginning and it, it has th have things, in your opinion, Craig and Paul, have they kind of leveled off a little bit with the expansion talk? I think they've they've leveled off and that there's nothing much to I mean everything we hear is some court, sort of crazy rumor that you know so and so's going here or there and then it's it's quickly denied or uh, it just kind of dies on the vine. So yeah, this is going to be a longer process than the last time. The last time it kind of happened pretty quickly. I think this one's going to be a much longer process because I think it's it's a much more layered thing that's happened uh, in that uh, it was it was way more out of the blue than the last time it happened. Yeah, you know, I think uh, it's settled in, and it, there's nothing to, to see really, you know, as far as massive seismic shifts and, until probably, you know, after the season, quite frankly. I, I don't know that with a month to go we're going to see, you know, USC all of a sudden throw their hat out there and announce they're, you know, aligning with the Big Ten. Uh, I just think that, you know, if there was an opportunity to, to announce something along those lines – uh, it's probably not far enough along the tracks to, to want to say anything publicly at this point, thus all the speculation. Uh, but also, if you did have something already lined up, uh, you know, last week or even this week would be the time to do it, and that doesn't appear to be the case. So I think everybody's just being very calculated, you know, much like the Big 12 got a lot of guff for actually standing up for themselves a little bit and fighting back. You know, if they just fold it over yeah. and, and just, you know, go ahead, Texas and Oklahoma. Like, we'll just let you go. Uh, then maybe we would have seen some more dominoes fall because people would have been like, oh, it's that easy? I'm like, okay. But I think the fact that the Big 12 dug its heels in the sand and said, no, we're, we're going to stick through this and we're going to make this thing work until, you know, basically we're forced to, to not allow it to work. Uh, I, I think that kind of made everybody go, okay, hold on now a second. Let's sort of look around now. And the dust is settling, and we know what Oklahoma and Texas are going to do in five years, or I guess, what, four years' time. And, uh, and let's kind of, you know, look at the chess pieces once again. So I think that's what the Big Ten's doing. I think that's what the Pac-12 is doing. The Pac-12, obviously, is doing a lot of due diligence. They've talked with the Big Ten, you know, apparently. They've obviously talked with the Big 12. We know that, uh, to be sure. Uh, no one really knows, you know, what the ACC's motivations really are right now. And that contract is an albatross. I mean, it is. That's a long-term contract that does not line up with a lot of the other grant of rights That'll be expiring here in the next couple of years. So I just think like all those factors and, and, you know, similar other factors are why we're kind of in the holding pattern when it comes to a college football realignment. All right, let's go. Let's do this, Paul. You guys uh, go with it as you want. I'm going to rattle some of these off off the chat room on the YouTube channel. Also, I want to get into that Big 12, Pac-12 powwow yesterday with the commissioners uh, from Dylan. West Virginia to the ACC, please. <laughs> By 2022, Tony Caridi joins us in 10 minutes. He knows a lot about what's going on, you would think, with West Virginia. Yeah, I, I'm interested to hear what he has to say. And, and no, I, I'm wondering, you know, like I said a second ago, what are the ACC's motivations here, you know, because of that long-term grant of rights? And, you know, previously, it, it seemed like any movement on their part would be as a result of what Notre Dame was going to do. So is that still in play? You know, does Notre Dame potentially joining, if they could somehow convince them to do that, I think that's the route that would allow a West Virginia into the conference. But if you're not adding to Notre Dame, you're kind and of you're just not expanding to, most. Yeah, likely. I mean, yeah. you're probably not expanding. Yeah. All right, uh, I, I'll say this about West Virginia: you wonder if the if the Pac-12 partnership is a thing that that does happen, even though say it does, and it's all it's twelve and eight. You know, you've got this twenty team partnership and maybe you do 10 teams on either side with pulling the Arizona schools over. Which I don't think over. has a chance in hell. No, no, no. Yeah, but I, like, I'm just, I'm just giving a loose right. guess of what it could be. That's what maybe, everyone's doing, really. Ma yeah. yeah, maybe you let West Virginia, like, find a new conference home because there's going to be if they, they were having a problem playing volleyball in Lubbock, they're going to have a hell of a time playing volleyball in Tucson and not to mention volleyball or women's basketball or or, or track or baseball uh, in Los Angeles in the middle of the week. So it's going to be hard on them travel-wise as far as time goes. And not only that, uh, you say that for West Virginia, but how about uh, you know Washington State having to go to West Virginia to play anything yeah, uh, to the eastern time zone. So it's you know, All right, uh, from, uh, I agree. Caden, I'll cancel your wish with mine that say, I hope West Virginia to the ACC never. Oh, from I got the keys, Keith Moore, North Carolina, the SEC. I'm speaking it into existence. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be surprised if they're on the short list of who the AC, or who the SEC is, is contemplating in terms of, you know, whatever their plans are. I don't think they're done. Like, I think they might be done for the time being, but 
And, and, and they might be done for, like, the foreseeable next few years. But I think when the whole bonanza pops off again here in 2025 or whatever, I think the SEC is not going to stop at, at 16. Um, they could, and, and they'd be fine. But, you know, if there is a chance at a Clemson or at a North Carolina or at someone like that, they're definitely going to, you know, as, as we all know all too well, they're definitely going to weigh their options, whether publicly or privately, and we'll have a plan in place. So, yeah, that wouldn't shock me, like, in a few years' time, but uh, the ACC grant of rights is a bit problematic. Yeah, it's going to be uh, – yeah, the thought about SEC going above 16, then you're talking about – okay, then what do you call it? Is it still the SEC or do you call it something else, it's like a like a completely different league? It, uh, from Nick Barnett, good afternoon, gentlemen. Nick, hey, always good to hear you. Louis Pop, uh, Louis Pop, sick him, baby. Dylan, I predict this will be the last year of the Big 12. Who knows? Roberto Zavala, boomer, sooner, from Matamoros, Mexico. All right. Hey, very, very cool. Shout out to uh, to Mexico. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. And it's funny, you know, everybody was talking about this super conference idea kind of loosely just a couple of years ago. And and we all thought that, okay, like that's that sounds interesting, but that's that's years away now. And yet, you know, all it took was right one, on lap. one couple major moves to, to make it a reality in a quick hurry. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not over. So some other ones. Bold Castify. We're going to do this off the top, then we'll break, come back. Noel Nation, Paul. All you right. You like that one. Also, uh, Dylan, Big 12, Pac-12 merger would be the worst case for West Virginia. Robert yeah. said, I hope Baylor ends up in the Pac-12. Baylor is a good program, Robert. That, that's, I don't see that happening at all. Dallas Harris, Hale State from Mississippi state fan i actually think baylor would be a good pac-12 team but yeah it's the whole religious affiliation that makes that problematic but otherwise i mean you know athletically they have good programs pretty much across Mm -hmm. the board uh so i i think you know kind of going more you know it's funny when we were talking about baylor's non-conference like when i first got here years and years ago i always noticed they didn't go west very often and i always found that curious you remember that i remember bringing that up to ian mccall actually and now they've scheduled some games here recently where they're obviously going to be going west and playing Utah and BYU and teams like that. But I kind of in Oregon down the road too, is yeah, it? Well, yeah, 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 Oregon down the road. Yeah. So yeah, they've lined up a few of those teams. But yeah, I always kind of felt like the East is a bit crowded, and if you were to sort of start that expansion and the newer expansion, West is where you would head. And I'm sure other programs have that in well, mind as well. But that religious I'm, affiliation's well, a no go. I, I, I don't care where they go. I'm just glad that the non-conference schedule has been sure. it, has been increased as far as the uh, the value and the quality of opponent. Even me, if they get drilled, it, it, you got to play them. you got to play I want, teams. I want to ask Paul this because we just had a Noel that was in the chat room. Okay, let's say there was something to these actual rumors about the SEC wanting to expand even further. And, you know, there was rumors last week about, uh, you know, trying to pick off an ACC contingent of, like, Florida State and North Carolina and probably Miami, I would think. How would you? I mean, as a Florida State fan, what do you think about the? Because they'd be in the they'd be in the click. Yeah, they'd be in the group. They'd be in the in crowd. But how would you feel about that? Uh, I think I'd probably have a lot of mixed emotions about it. In that, you know, what my my genuine hope for them is that they start winning conference titles and and getting back into national contention is what the program was on. And I don't know if they do that if they join the SEC. I think it'd be you know. Uh, to a much lesser degree. Well, I mean, it's kind Can of you just describe Texas. Yeah, it's exactly what I, you know, that's what I'd be worried about. But on the other hand, I do know that like the whole uh, recruiting advantage that comes with the SEC would be a boon for them. But so if, if you got 32 teams, eventually, yeah, is there any recruiting advantage? Yeah. You know, it's like how, how far will they go? And, and 16 is already quite a bit. All right, let's go through uh, just a more handful of these. Then Tony Caridi will give us the West Virginia uh, uh, angle. Joey B, good afternoon from Colorado. Shane M, 1980, go Tigers. Uh, Russell Williams, the other eight teams have to look elsewhere, leave as soon as possible. Decline said, hook them and Silver Sergeant, go Hogs. Um, and then somebody put down the horns down. Uh, and, and it's going to so be a uh, $15 yeah. fine. You can hit the little cash button and we <laughs> get paid via that way. From Nick Barnett, by the way, you can do that. And Armstrong, then we'll get pizza if we raise enough money today. Great Caden Grace, some of the... Uh, some of us said from day one it was over for now. It is always that way. Lots of chatter in AD offices, but these things take some time to line up. And Nick said, hey, as the Big 12 filed suit, saw a pundit casually mention a Big 12 lawsuit in a pretty certain context. Yeah, that's when they, well, it was the cease and desist and kind of threatening that there could be one. And now, as Bob Bowlesby said Monday in Austin, 
ESPN and Bob Bowlesby and the Big 12 have said, hey, let's kind of keep this from getting too much more public and work maybe behind the scenes. The the the, the, the hay is out. Is it out of the barn or in the barn? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's back in the barn. <laughs> the, the hay's in the barn the, as of the, now, yeah. I think. That, state, that statement, though, was kind of cryptic, cryptic to me on two levels. One, he didn't want to torch espn they said it wasn't in either of our best interests. now that could have just been the big 12 you know fighting a giant a giant like disney and espn but it also could have meant that like espn's like yeah okay well like behind the scenes like okay we'll cop to the fact that you have that but guess what we have we have one of your schools contacting us asking yeah this like uh, can we join okay we got a break i know we 